Hey, hey, you too. Welcome back to Arabin Outdoors. Hey, I'm Arabin, but you knew that, didn't you? Hey guys, today I want to talk about a knife that I first featured about seven years ago in my first ever bug out bag video. I'll put a card to it right up here, and I'll put a link to it in the description and maybe an end screen. Uh, back then, my channel was called TR Puffin Stuff. It was then what I called my bug out bag. Now I call my get home bag. It's the bag that stays in the back of my truck. And uh, while a lot of things in that bag have changed over the years, one thing that hasn't is this knife right here. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. The Gerber Bear Grylls Ultimate Survival Knife. Now I want to start off by saying first of all, and this is my opinion only, your opinion may vary, and that's okay. But... I don't like Bear Grylls. I think he's dangerous and I think he does some stupid things in survival situations. And it scares me that people watch him and look up to him and think that okay that's what I need to do. He put his name on this knife uh, years ago and um, that's about the only thing I think that he has to do with it. He did not design it. I learned that. He just put his name on it so hopefully they, they could sell a bunch of them. And my God, they did. But it was actually designed by one of Gerber's knife designers. And it's kind of modeled after the Gerber, um, what is it, the LMF? Now, this is not a Portland, USA Gerber. This is a made in China Gerber. And I don't even think that they're still uh, on the market. Um, I may be wrong on that. You may be able to find them, uh, new. All that being said, I think that it is a very well thought out knife. And I have been very pleased with it for eight years. Over the years, there have been a lot of mixed emotions, reviews, thoughts, and opinions about this knife. I'm going to give you mine. The blade, overall, has held up fine. Of course, you can see signs of wear and tear. But otherwise, it has held up fine. The tip is still intact. The blade has no major chips or chings. The serrated blade, I have not sharpened in eight years. But it will still cut through rope paracord. It's great for getting fine shavings on fat wood, doing feather sticks. It'll cut through just about anything and I've never sharpened that serrated edge. Now the drop point design um, is really nice looking. Uh, you can see right there it says Gerber and it's got Bear's signature on it. Whoopee! It is a high carbon steel and uh, uh, exactly what variety, I don't know, some Chinese still probably, but it's relatively easy to sharpen. I have had to sharpen the front part of the blade numerous times, but like I say, the serrated edge, I've never had to sharpen. Overall, it's 10 inches from pommel to tip. It has a three-quarter tang. It has a stainless steel pommel with a waffle design. It has a plastic grip with a rubberized coating. And I have to say, the grip is very comfortable. Now, I'm wearing gloves today, but even without the gloves, it's a very comfortable knife. The ergonomics on this knife are excellent. It's very comfortable in my hand. I wear a size medium glove, so I guess I have medium sized hands. Um, it, it's certainly not too small for my hands, and I wouldn't say it's too large either. One thing I do like about it is there's still enough room on the back to grip here, and you can get some good chopping action. I'll show you some of that now. <laughs>
So yeah, good, good. It's a good chopper, and uh, you can really hold back here. Put your. It's got a good spot there for your thumb with some texture on it, so your thumb doesn't slip. But that rubberized grip, you can almost squeeze it. It's very comfortable. Early on in the production of this knife, they did have a manufacturer's problem with the pommel. But back in 2011, they remedied that and corrected it and fixed it. I will tell you that this pommel has hammered many uh, wooden stakes, titanium stakes, and metal stakes, snakes. And it's also hammered some nails into wood. Like a bird on a tree. And I have not had any issues with the pommel. But I saw some videos where people were whining. I threw it up against the tree and it fell on a rock and the pommel broke. Well, hey, dumbass, don't be throwing your knife up against the tree and on rocks. I use knives for what they're intended. And unless you're a ninja, there's no need to be throwing a knife, honestly. Real men throw knives. Like I say, this knife has done everything that I have needed it to do. One unique thing about this is uh, it does have these holes drilled in here. Two here on the front and then the one on the back. Those are intended for you to lash the knife onto a stick or a pole to make a spear. I don't know that I would ever need to do that, but if I did, it's good to know I can. Let's talk a little bit about the sheath. You can put it in this way or you can put it in that way. So right hand or left hand, um, then the sheath works. So um, it's got it clipped in and you can see the retention on it is really good. There's a little bit of wiggle in it, um, but it's, it's not going anywhere. Um, but it does come out relatively easily when you need it to. Um, I usually don't use this, but it does have a Velcro strap at the top while you're carrying it. If you just want a little bit of extra to keep it from swinging out or anything, it does have that little Velcro strap there. But like I say, good retention and uh, it fits in there. It goes nice and smooth. On the front of the sheath, there is a ferro rod. And it does a very good job of uh, making sparks. You can see I've used it many times. And I've never had a problem starting a fire with this little teeny ferro rod. I like the way it has the grip. You can hold it with your fingers like this. You can get a good grip on it while you're striking. And the knife on the blade, on the top of the blade there, you'll see it has an area that is sharpened up to give you that good edge so that you can get good sparks. Don't want to catch my screen on fire. And that uh, ferro rod just very fashionably fits right there and it snaps into place. And again, the retention on that is very good. It takes a little bit to pull it out, but that's good. And then it clicks in. On the back, there used to be a little plastic pocket here that had some survival information, signaling information over time that has deteriorated and gone. One of the belt loops here, you see there's two belt loops, so you could wear it sideways like this or you have um, the strap here where you can wear it this way. So you can put it on your belt like that or like that. Right now, I just have a little bit of fire tinder and a little Ziploc bag up in there. So, um, if I was somewhere where I didn't have good tinder or fat wood or something like that, I've always got that that I can use in conjunction with the ferro rod. Also on the sheath, 
you can unstrap this little Velcro strap here and it opens up like this and you'll see right here it's a diamond sharpening stone so when you're out in the field you can take your knife and you can you can use that to do some fine tuning on the on the blade and keep your knife sharp while you're out and about so but overall the knife does good I mean as far as cutting goes yes it does good for food processing and stuff like that of course like I say the serrated edge goes through paracord and rope like butter but I wanted to see today if it'll still hold up to the heavier stuff and I'm gonna see how it holds up to batoning I've never had a problem batoning hardwood with this as you can see the blade is still in good shape so I'm gonna put it to a little eight-year test and uh, process a little bit of firewood so let's see how it does So there you see it still batons very well that is some very hard wood that I just went through it still does fine on feather sticks um, the, that little edge that they intended for the uh, ferro rod has got a nice sharp ridge on it so it's really good on fat wood and making the fine shavings like you saw so yeah I'm still very pleased with this knife even though it's got PG on it and I don't like BG. Eight years in and I still like it. So the Bear Grylls Ultimate Survival Knife. If you can find one, you might want to think about picking it up. Overall, I would say it's a great knife to have. And I'm happy that I do. And hey, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I'd like to ask you to consider doing so. Because it greatly helps YouTube. And lets them know that I'm still here. And that you guys like what I'm doing. So if you like this video, also give me a thumbs up. Till next time, keep calm, carry on, and keep it outdoors.